Hello everybody, welcome to Scotty D Gaming. I'm Scotty D and today I'm going to be reviewing Observation. Hell is only a word. The reality is much, much worse. Let me show you. Observation is a sci-fi story based puzzler. You take control of the space station's AI called Sam and have to work with Emma, the only person left, to find out why the space station has left Earth's orbit and what's happened to the rest of the crew. The game's premise is intriguing, giving me Event Horizon vibes, which can only be a compliment given that Event Horizon is one of the best sci-fi horrors ever made. The soundtrack is excellent with 80s space synthwave and I really like the ambient sounds of the space station which did well at making you feel isolated. Unfortunately, that's where the positives end. Aside from the excitement of trying to uncover the mystery, which is an anticlimax in itself, nothing exciting ever happens and it's an incredibly mundane experience made frustrating by the poor UI, terrible controls and zero signposting. As the station's AI, you can navigate by taking control of the various cameras scattered about and also a small drone which allows for free exploration. This is a very clever idea, but both are frustrating to control in practice. When using the camera, the turn at a snail's pace, so even when you know what you want to do, it'll take you three times as long to do it. And no, you can't adjust the sensitivity of the cameras, I tried. Then there's the drone. Although when you get to control this for the first time, it's a liberating experience being able to go where you want. It soon becomes the worst part of the game, dragging progress to a grinding halt as you're forced to explore the similar corridors and exteriors of the space station for very small interactable objects. One of the reasons why Free Explore is so mundane and frustrating is because the objectives are so vague and the player is given little direction as to what they must do or find. There's no intuitive signposting which leaves you bumbling your way around, clicking on anything you can interact with until you find the right object. The game expects you to be a NASA qualified astronaut so you know what the fuck you're looking for. Not long after getting access to the drone, are you tasked with venturing outside of the station into space to activate some stuck hatch clamps on Pod 3. You're given no direction on what a hatch clamp is and for some reason when you exit the station you lose access to your map containing the layout of the pods. A hatch clamp to me is a mechanical object I needed to unjam and because at this point you've only played the game for an hour you haven't exactly memorised the entire layout of the station to know where pod 3 is. This results in an incredibly boring, mentally draining search of poorly labelled pods that might as well have been written in braille for how close you have to be to identify them. It turns out that a hash clamp isn't even mechanical, it's a small blue screen. <laughs> it's, it's just, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. This is the first of many times where I nearly put the game down for good for disrespecting my time. I don't expect to have my hand held, but I do expect to be given the information to allow me to identify and locate what I'm actually looking for. When you do get to the hash clamp, I at least expect it to be rewarded with a fun puzzle. I was wrong. The puzzles in this game do not deserve to be called puzzles. Most of them are simple button prompts or sequences the player must follow and they're often repeated until you are lobotomised from boredom. The hatch clamp puzzle has you holding down and then releasing two buttons to activate each clamp and each time it's identical. Every time you sync yourself to a piece of equipment which you'll be doing very, very frequently, you do the same press three buttons minigame and when you interact with the strange hexagon object, you just have to copy the symbols it gives you. Nearly every puzzle is a Simon Says minigame it's dismal. If you are going to put a mini game as a barrier to progress, then you have to make it interesting or it just becomes a chore. The saving system is terrible. You can't manually save and you have to rely on checkpoints which are spaced in seemingly random and non-logical places. There's no way for you to check when the game is saved as there's no load menu. You can't rely on the white saving circle in the upper right because it's easy to miss and it also flashes upon leaving the menu. I lost a lot of progress near the start, including three puzzles and a cutscene, which you can't skip because the game never saved after the cutscene. You're scared to turn it off in case you lose progress. One part of the UI which I found to be counterintuitive and poorly implemented was the scan interface which you bring up with L2. This mechanic isn't used for any meaningful application, it's as if they put it in as a placeholder and forgot to do anything with it. The only thing it's used for is to relay certain info back to Emma which is basically hold L2 to allow you to click on the only option on the screen. 
It's a button press for the sake of a button press. This scan should have been used as a guidance hood for the current objective which would have alleviated the boring search sections of the game. And the last annoying thing I want to mention about the UI is that you can't use B or Circle to back out of menus. The industry standard has been completely disregarded here. Atrocious gameplay and interface aside, the visuals and effects are something special. Never before have I played a game that successfully made me an epileptic. The constant flashing, interference and out of focus visuals that try to imitate a 1980s camera only served to give me eye strain. After every session I left with a headache because I was squinting trying to see through the shaky visuals. I understand trying to stylize a game but after a cutscene or intro it has to be dialed right back for the gameplay so you don't nauseate your players. The characters and storyline didn't draw me in either. I found Emma to be quite robotic both in performance and facial animation which barely rivals my sex bot in believability. The most captivating moments from the story are not what the game provides but what your own mind hopes that you will see. I was hoping for something mind blown to be revealed or something horrific like Event Horizon but you aren't rewarded with anything satisfying. The game will take you approximately 6 hours to complete which isn't very long once you consider that most of it is struggling to find where to go. And I'm glad it's not longer because I simply do not have the mental will and fortitude to play it any further. Observation is a big disappointment seen as it came from the same team who gave us stories untold which I absolutely loved. You can see that the developer No Code struggled to transition from a segmented anthology based game to a single cohesive experience. Not only should you avoid observation at all costs but you should kill it with fire if you ever come across it.